So nowadays we must have come across a particular term that is machine translation. Why it is so much in demand? Because uh, so many things are there, so many large pools of data is there. But uh, there is a huge demand of conversion. And uh, it's uh, quite hectic and quite errorsome if you employ some of the humans or if you use the help of some of the uh, pseudo intelligence based machines. So if you have some uh, artificially perfect uh, intelligence based machines, then obviously these sort of machines are going to guarantee you the perfect translation. But as we do know that the perfectly translated techniques, uh, the kind of algorithms, the kind of uh, developments in terms of speech and NLP has not been done yet. It's the part of process and it's continuous part of process. So it'll uh, a kind of uh, endless journey because the pursuit of excellence has never is going to get achieved because the excellence is a thing which is uh, existing at the infinite point. So that's why in this particular uh, video, we are going to talk about machine translation. And obviously it consists of two terms, machine and translation. So the translation achieved with the help of a machine. So quite obvious that uh, we are going to discuss the kind of methods. We are going to discuss the kind of linguistic techniques or the rules and the sort of uh, methods which are useful to convert one form of data into another form with the help of machine. So let's uh, start. So here there, my name is Rohit Kumar. And today we are going to discuss a kind of uh, important, not only important, a very important topic from futuristic point of view, because uh, as you do know that uh, one form of document is going to get converted automatically with the help of Google Translate or something. It is just one example and uh, that also sort of cloud-based example, but imagine that uh, there is a device, there is a sort of uh, a small robotic uh, uh, segment in your room or in your house and it is going to real time and going to convert a real time um, speech into text form in some other form. And it is going to translate from one language to other language. So sort of endless opportunities are there. And that's why NLP field is so much focused on machine translation. So today we are going to discuss this particular repository. This repository is a part of Google uh, research work. It is a sec to sec, sequence to sequence sort of. And uh, it's a kind of general purpose encoder decoder framework for TensorFlow. Now, when we are seeing encoder decoder, then how it is related to uh, machine translation? So here you can see that uh, a general purpose encoder decoder from work for TensorFlow that can be used for machine translation. And uh, obviously we are seeing machine translation, the text summarization is a sort of uh, thing that is going to come into picture because you are converting one form of data into another form. So one is elaborated document, second one is concise one. And that's why you are going to have a kind of summary of the whole paragraph. Additionally, you are going to have the conversational modeling, some sort of uh, captioning related uh, research, et cetera, et cetera. So, so many things are there, like uh, where the, this word comes, encoder, decoder. So like uh, you have the digital logic, there you have the concept of encoder decoder similar sort of you have this uh, phenomena here also that you are going to map one paragraph onto uh, another sort of paragraph or something like that based on a particular traits or characteristics so now moving forward that uh, this is uh, the kind of uh, uh, article that uh, they have given uh, support to the massive acceleration of neural uh, machine translation architecture and again, it's the archive, uh, archive. So there you can go and have the kind of a study of this particular work. I will recommend you to go through this repository first and uh, there is the readme file. So if you jump onto this, you will find the basic contribution and the official uh, code related information. Then you have the paper. So in this paper, if you jump onto, you will find the information related to the different versions and uh, here you have the submission history sort of so all the versions related information you can get then the pdf you can download from here so you will have the access to full fledged uh, information now in this uh, work the people uh, means the authors have discussed the empirical results so you can jump directly onto the results section and you can see and if you are not interested in the result first then you can go through the step by step so starting with the abstract you will have this kind of short summary over here and uh, there, whatever they have presented, uh, they present a uh, first large scale analysis of NMT architecture hyperparameters. Okay, then they report the empirical results and the variance number for hundreds of experimental runs corresponding to more than 250,000 GPU hours on the standard WMT English to German translation task. Okay, so this is the particular task they have focused on. Then uh, they have given, I think, uh, basic introduction, yes. 
then uh, you, they are having the background and uh, preliminaries because with respect to every work, you need to have some of the basics. So if you are not having the kind of basics, they have uh, mentioned the sort of minimum basics that you must be familiar with before going to the results or the actual contribution part of this particular paper. Then they have discussed with the setup uh, with respect to experiments, the data set and the pre-processing. They have discussed how they have improved the conditioning of data sets. Then training setup and uh, what sort of software they have used, the baseline model. And uh, then they jump onto the actual experiments and discussion, including the embedded dimensionality. And uh, uh, the sort of things, uh, one thing that uh, when you are going to have the analysis or the comparison with respect to experiments, then you are going to have different uh, dimensions based analysis, different database based analysis might be there, different parameters based analysis might be there. So it depends from uh, what particular uh, point of view you are looking onto the research and uh, uh, at what dimension of the research the particular work is focusing on. Okay. So all the other things say any uh, directional or the bidirectional, et cetera, et cetera, the type of decoders, et cetera, and the attention mechanism, all these uh, lot of NLP related things are there. If you are an NLP guy, I will highly recommend you to go into this field. And obviously if you are a pro uh, researcher, then you don't need to listen all these things from my side because already you knew that as a beginner, I will recommend you to go through this particular work. You will get a lot of information with respect to machine translation from this particular work. It's a quite a good work. Additionally, you are supposed to contact it to the author so for more highlighted insights and the kind of actual things which are not available in a ready-made form. So they might help you out with the additional code or sort of uh, contribution related. So that's all from this particular work. Now jumping on to the uh, specific machine translation related thing. So there are a number of uh, data sets which have been used uh, for machine translation. Coming to the specific benchmarking, so the SS, then uh, WMT 2014-16, etc. Then English to German, German to English, then English to Romanian, English to French, and uh, German to English, then English to Vietnamese, and a uh, lot of uh, machine level uh, language conversion uh, data sets are there, like the Finnish to English, then uh, English to Kres, then uh, the English to Arabic, then French to English. Uh, so all these things are available and a number of models are also available and they have shown the substantial accuracy uh, from implementation point of view. So the Bybert is there, then Delight is there, then by Simcut is there, then uh, the uh, TSKD is there, then ByteNet is there, then uh, by Simcut is there, then TensorFlow related Tensor to Tensor is there. So all these models are quite helpful. And uh, if you are interested, you can go on to the scholar uh, search engines, any of the scholar search engine, and you can uh, try to find the related machine translation papers. And uh, there you will find the related data sets and the model related information. Coming to the specific discussion based on the libraries, then multiple libraries are available to help you out with respect to machine translation. And there are a number of uh, data sets are also available, as I have, I have already told you. But uh, if you are interested, you can jump onto the specifically the machine translation data sets on a specific website and there you'll find the number of data sets. So usually the academic websites discuss the paper. So if you have a specific access to any academic portal there also you can find the papers and they will give you the specific idea that which particular research direction may lead to a specific kind of data sets and then you can find the related data sets. So the neural uh, machine translation by jointly learning to align and translate is a PyTorch implementation discussed in 2014. And it's a kind of bit old, but good paper. Then uh, another work uh, is a 2019 archive work where the exploration with respect to the limits of transfer learning with the unified text to text transformer they have discussed. It. Then uh, the empirical evaluation of a generic uh, convolution in recurrent network for sequence modeling it discussed in 2018 work which is a, a PyTorch implementation. And uh, there are a number of uh, other works, uh, including the different sorts of implementation, depending on the underlying technology and the techniques. So that's all from my side. Uh, hopefully this video must have been useful to you in some way, but uh, still there are a lot of other dimensions where you can contribute, where you can move on, where you can actually look into that uh, what sort of opportunities lie for you. So don't restrict only to this video. Uh, look for other videos and there you will find some additional information.
hopefully this must have been useful still i will request you to please criticize and let me know the kind of uh, opinions that you are having with respect to this particular video it will help me to improve the quality of the future video thanks for watching have a good one